Hi everyone and welcome to a new series about the circuit analysis and we will discuss the Fourier series in this analysis and this is our example number one. What I will do in this video series of circuit analysis during Fourier series is we will discuss several circuit electric circuits and we will apply an input voltage, specific input voltage and we will look at the response and for that we will use the Fourier series. Why we use a Fourier series is very handy if you have a non-sinusoidal input signal like this and if you want to break up the problem in very small parts then the Fourier series is a very handy tool to work out the analysis. But we will see that shortly in more detail when we go through the example. And this is our example number one and we will work out another example and another example number two and we will see different problems. So let's jump to the, our first example. What do we have? We have the following circuits. We have input Vs which is our input voltage which is given by this Fourier series expression. I will go in more detail shortly. We have a resistor and we have the inductor in series. So we have actually RL circuit and that's connected to the output input voltage and the output is across the inductor. What we want and we have the R and the L already given 10 ohms and 4 henrys for the inductor. We would like to determine the output signal V out if the input is given by this expression. So this is the Fourier series of uh, expression of a uh, signal, which is of course given in this mathematical form. What you see in this expression is that the DC term is just this separate constant term, which is the uh, frequency independent term. And these are the frequency dependent terms that are also called the harmonics. And you can see that the harmonics are dependent on the value of k. k will start at the 1 and it will all go to infinity. So it will actually mean that there are infinite terms here. So DC term plus a lot of AC terms. The N in this case, which is shown in the expression for the harmonics, is given by 2k minus 1. For this specific signal, it doesn't have to be all the time. So if the k is 1, this will be 2 times 1 minus 1 will be 1. If the k is 2, this will be 2 times 2 minus 1 will be 3. And if k is 3, this will be 2 times 3 minus 1 will be 5. So that means actually that the n is actually an odd value. So it will be 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. So we will see what kind of response we have just looking at this input voltage and also the resistor and inductor value for this specific circuit. Before we move on, we can also say what kind of circuit is this. If I look at the circuit, I see for very low frequencies for DC, this is actually a short. So it is actually the, due to the reactance of the inductor. And if this is for the very high frequencies, this will be an open circuit. So actually for very low frequencies, when I have a short here, that means actually the output voltage will be a zero. That means the very low frequencies will be attenuated. That's so that's actually a high pass filter just looking at the circuit without doing any detailed X analysis. So let's look at the solution because we want to of course work towards the output signal. So the radio frequency, let's first have that one that is actually very important. It's also called the fundamental frequency in this case is given by m pi which is also given here. So we have the omega zero which is called the fundamental frequency which is just pi and the n is what we just discussed is the value that will change depending on this case the k. So we will use then the circuit analysis tools to work out towards the output voltage expression using the input voltage and also the circuit itself. So using Vaser we can write down for the output voltage the following using voltage divided rule. So the output has a reactance divided by the total impedance and times the input voltage is equal to the output voltage. We just, this is just very straightforward voltage divider rule. And if I just work out the reactance, I will have the J omega N L and also for the exam, exact same expression in the denominator. If I write down this in more detail, just using the given values, I have this expression. This is just a complex expression. We have seen that the output now is dependent on the input using this dynamics of the circuit. Now we will look first 
again to DC means actually that there is no AC term involved. That means actually there is just one, a half for the input. So n is zero. That means also omega n is zero because the omega n is related to n. So if n is zero, that will be omega n is zero. Then we have the following. Input in phase is just a half. But the output is zero and we have discussed this shortly why if the frequency is zero hertz or zero radians per second doesn't matter then the inductor will be a short so inductors is a shorted so just the wire here and if you want to calculate or measure the voltage across a wire that will be of course zero and that is actually why we have a v out of zero so that's actually for just the dc if I now move on with the AC part, so the end harmonics for this, what is the response of these terms, that will be the following. We will look at the Vs for the input voltage actually and just looking at this expression. Now we have to do something uh, very st structured because we will need to work it out in phasors. That means we need to look at the amplitude and also the phase of this expression. The amplitude is given by the 2 divided by pi and also the n also in the denominator. That's actually what you see here. The phase is minus 9 degrees. Why? Because for the calculations of the signals, the cosine is used as a reference signal. That is, of course, not really mandatory, but it is handy if you convert your signals first to cosine. So that's actually what I have done. So to rewrite this in the cosine form, I really need to place a minus 90 degrees in the cosine. So I will replace this by cosine n pi t minus 90 degrees. That will result in exact same amplitude shown here. Just I will place just the n here outside the summation. And I have then the phase shift of minus 90 degrees due to that change from the sine to cosine expression. Now, if I use this phase and I will use uh, the rectangular form formula, we have discussed this in a separate video about phasors and complex numbers, I have this expression. So the sine of minus 90 degrees will be minus 1, this will be just 0, and I have this expression for my input voltages, looking only at the AC terms, so the harmonics. So you can see if n changes, this will change. Now, I need, of course, this expression for my AC values because I know the DC, but I don't know the AC yet. The V out was just this expression and it will depend on the Vs, which is now given by this expression. So what I will do is next, I will use this expression and I will substitute the Vs, which is shown here, in here. So I have done this here, shown here. Now, if I work this out by the denominator, the numerator first, I can also see the uh, following, maybe it's better to discuss this first. n pi in the numerator and also n pi here, that will cancel each other out. I have a minus j2 and I have a j4 that will result in a plus 8, just real value. And I have only this in the denominator, which is shown here, and I have only 8 in the numerator. Of course, I want to have an amplitude and a phase expression for this, exp for this complex expression. So this will be 8 over the length of this expression and the phase shift will be given by this expression minus arc tangent of the 4 n pi divided by 10. If you work it out a little bit in more detail and also write that down as 100 and also 16 n squared pi squared I have this expression and this will be of course a little bit simplified in this form. I will now have this amplitude and, all the, and also this phase. Now I will now go from the frequency domain to the time domain. So in time domain, the V out will be this. Why? Because I look at the amplitude and also at the phase only, and I will just place in a template, which is just a cosine of this radian frequency. And this will be just the phase, which is shown here. And this is just the amplitude here, and I will place it in front of this cosine expression. That's actually what you need to, need to do. And of course, this is dependent on the N, and that is related to the K. If I want to rewrite this in a more uh, detail form, then this will be our expression for the V out, which we will see in a summation form. Now, 
of course we can work out here many many terms which is which you also can see from the uh, summation term because it goes from k is to equal to one all the way to infinity so we can work out maybe 10 20 maybe 40 terms maybe 100 terms it really depends on actually what your accuracy will be but if i look at the first four terms you will see what kind of sequence we will get so i will look at case one two three four that means actually in n one three five seven and these are the harmonics so let's look at the details k is one will mean n is one the v out which will be given now in the first term as a green one will be just using this formula i will just substitute n is one n is one and n is one and that is actually the result and if you work it out you will get approximately 0 0.5 cosine pi t and a minus 52 degrees that's just the first term for k is one so it is actually the first harmonic. Now, the second harmonic, that means actually for N is 3, specifically the V out, the second one, will be again, just substitute for N is 3, N is 3, and for this also 3, you will get this expression, and you will have approximately 0 0.21, and a cosine of 3 pi t minus 57, I mean 75 degrees. So if you, of course, continue with the next one, K3, and it's five you will have exact the same procedure and for the next one then and these are the four terms i have actually now determined using just the formula which is shown here so i have now in total five terms four from the harmonics and one from the dc term which is from the uh, analysis here what do i do next i will just collect those five terms four plus one and i will, I will have this because this is just zero, I will of course just skip that. And I have just V out one all the way to V out four. Of course, it will continue all the way to V out infinity. And I have course, I don't want I don't want to write them down all, all of them because I see already in the amplitude fashion, because it started at 0.5 approximately, then it goes down to 0 0.21, and then it goes down to 0 0.13 approximately, then it goes to 0 0.09. You can see that this is really decreasing very rapidly. You can also see if the inc frequency just increases, the phase is also approaching minus 90 degrees. So you can also see that from this analysis. So what you see now is in the V out expression in total is this expression. This is just the first term, second term, third term, and the fourth term. Of course, I might have the fifth and the sixth term if you want more accuracy in your analysis. But I already see this is quite accurate for the first four terms already. So let's look at the next analysis and we will discuss in more detail what we have. This is actually the output signal spectrum, which is very helpful for this specific signal. Because if I look at this signal, we have just determined, we can plot the amplitude spectrum and also the phase spectrum. So this is the amplitude spectrum. This is the phase spectrum of the V out output voltage. And this is just the amplitude of that output signal what you see is that at zero which is at dc there is no output that means just zero and the phase shift was also zero degrees so you can see that clearly in this case the at frequency pi radius per second it was a 0 0.498 volts as shown here and the associated phase was minus 50 degrees you can also see that here so if you if you don't know that uh, anymore you can see that in the output expression if you go to the next expression, which is the next term, which is the 0 0.205, which is the amplitude, and the associated phase, phase is minus 75 degrees, etc. You can then look at the blue one and also the red one. You can follow actually the amplitude and also the phase in this spectrum. What you also see is that we don't have the even terms in this, in this circuit. So the even terms will be not present at the output for this circuit and you also see again it will be much easier to see in this graphical form but the amplitude will decrease very rapidly so if i go to for example 9 pi 11 pi 13 pi then you will see that this amplitude will be even more even smaller so that will mean that actually the contribution will be very insignificant and the phase shift will approach actually an asymptotic phase minus 90 degrees for this so that's actually what we have for this 
exercise. So I've determined my V out. I've plotted also the spectrum and it will be giving, of course, some more detail. And if you want to more accuracy, again, you can add the fifth, the sixth term or even more terms if you want to have it more details and also more accuracy. Okay, we have now concluded our first example about circuit analysis using Fourier series. I will continue in the next example, example number two, and use a different circuit and we will look at a different input signal and we will work it out again step by step looking how to work it out for the output response. Thanks again for your attention and see you next time and take care.